What is up guys, it is Jack and welcome to a new video today. It has been about six months since the release of the iPhone 8 Plus, but it didn't take six months for it to be immediately overshadowed, which came out literally 10 minutes later. But taking a look back, since I've been using this iPhone 8 Plus for almost as long as it's been out, I thought it'd be a good idea to make a video about what it's like six months after its release. So the first thing that we can get out of the way right away is definitely the design. Clearly it's nothing new, it's definitely not bezel-less, and it's got an average display. Looking at this, you could easily confuse it with something like an iPhone 6, since they look pretty much the same. Although, while it's not bezel-less, there's nothing really wrong with it, and up until really recently, no one was really complaining about it. And while, of course, Face ID may be a little bit better on the iPhone 10, the home button really isn't that bad. You can see it let me in almost immediately. Face ID is not that fast. Turning it around, though, you'll see that this thing does actually look pretty new. It's got that brand new all-glass back, which allows for wireless charge and just by looking at it, you can tell this is not an iPhone 7 or a 6. Looking over at the camera, this thing also does a great job at that. While you may be thinking, oh, well, it can't even compete with the iPhone 10, you're actually kind of wrong. There's only two main differences between this and the iPhone 10's camera, and that is, for one, the telephoto lens does not have optical image stabilization, which is pretty annoying for when you're trying to get videos at two times zoom, but it's definitely not a deal breaker. And the second difference is that it's obviously horizontal instead of vertical on an iPhone 10, which I think looks kind of weird anyway, so I like it the way it is. This thing shoots video at 4K at 60 frames per second, and it can do 1080p at 240 frames per second, which is again, really amazing. Obviously, it only shoots on 12 megapixels, which is kind of sad considering Apple hasn't updated their megapixel count in a long time, but it definitely doesn't look bad. The selfie cam also looks pretty great as it shoots at five, seven megapixels, but despite how it looks, jumping inside the phone, we can actually see some really impressive speed. Specs. Here's a Geekbench score I ran on one of the newest versions of iOS 11, and you can see it crosses that 10,000 multi-core score, which is absolutely amazing, and even the brand new Galaxy S9 can't do that. That's speeds that we can really only see on Apple, and that's almost as fast as a mid-range laptop. That is just amazing for a phone. And what a lot of people forget is that these scores are actually pretty much identical to the iPhone 10. They've got the exact same A11 Bionic chip processor, I don't think it's called Bionic Chip. I don't know, I'm just a big fan of Lab Rats. I haven't watched that show in so long. You know, if you guys, if you people that watch Lab Rats are out there, comment down below. It used to be my favorite show. Anyways, it's got the same processor as the iPhone X, so it's actually just as fast. Looking past the numbers though, just from day to day usage, I can tell you from my own personal experience that you almost never experience lag on this thing. It moves and opens apps extremely quick. This feels like a flagship, and while it's technically not because it doesn't have the display and the looks to be one, what's inside definitely could be. Another cool benefit of the iPhone plus over a lot of flagships these days is its stereo speaker system. It's got a speaker right here and down here, creating that cool cyber optic sound that we've seen was just released on the Galaxy S9. Again, this thing is super comparable to that device. If you want to talk about waterproofing, this guy's got it too. With an IP67 rating, you could easily drop this thing in the pool and be fine. Technically, it can only survive three feet of water, but Apple always underestimates those scores. If you look up some of those phone waterproof tests, you'll see it can survive up to 20 feet underwater. That's one area Apple has always been surprisingly strong. And that's pretty much it for the iPhone 8 Plus. Obviously, it was overlooked from day one because everyone was just like, iPhone 8 Plus, cool. oh my god, iPhone 10. But if you take a couple steps back, this guy really isn't that bad. And for $200 less, I think the iPhone 8 Plus is a great deal. And it's a great thing to buy if you've got your eyes on that iPhone 10, but you don't want to be spending all of that cash. So guys, that is pretty much it for this video. If you did enjoy it, make sure to leave a like. Also, comment down below what you guys think of the iPhone 8 Plus as it's been my daily driver since October when it came out as I pre-ordered it the day it was available. And a lot of people to this day still tell me, Jack, why did you get the iPhone 8 Plus over the iPhone 10? But I hope this video has shown you that really the similarities between the two show that the iPhone 10 really isn't worth that extra $200. But that's just my opinion. I made an entire video about why I didn't want to buy the iPhone 10 which will be linked in the description. Anyways, guys, I'll see you next time. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're new. I'm Jack. Peace. Out. I'm Ryan.